We're back here on the platform and we are talking about uh, body image as we continue our health series, uh, our weekend health series. And uh, we are joined now by Alexis Bethel, who is uh, a life coach, and um, Gigi Ali, who's a makeup artist. Ladies, good to see you. Hi. Good to see you. Good Thanks see for you having too. us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, now, um, a life coach. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, work in a gym? Uh, I'm the co-owner of a yoga studio here in Nassau, Studio Ohana, which is a yoga, wellness, and fitness studio. Studio Ohana. Mm -hmm. Where are you located? We are in Cable Beach, right above Marco's Pizza, across from Wendy's and Super Value. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you are teaching yoga? I am a yoga teacher as well as a life coach, yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, and um, how long have you been doing this? I have been doing this for about three years. Um, prior to that, I actually did my master's in international economics and was an international development consulting and, or consultant in Washington, D.C., so totally uh, different life. And, and what is the purpose of, of, of yoga, for instance? Yeah, I mean, there are so many different, I mean, I could, I could go on forever, but, you know, I think that we think of it really as the physical aspect in the West where, you know, you go in, you do some up dog, some down dog, and, and that's all great, but... Um, it is an incredible way to, you know, strengthen the body, to lose weight, to do all of these sorts of things. But I think for the purpose of this show, what we're actually talking about is, you know, when I was leaving my consulting job and my life was kind of spinning out, I didn't know what I wanted with my life, I had realized that wasn't working for me anymore, I actually became very anorexic and dropped down to a size double zero, which there's nothing wrong with that size, but it's not my body. Uh, and I think it's interesting, we've been talking so much about the show, or on the show about obesity, which I'm so happy to talk about that as well, but there is this other end of the spectrum with body image as well, right? And yoga is the thing, I've been practicing for a long time, but I got very serious about it at this point, and it is the thing that most deeply connected me to my body. And the way that you talk about, you know, your body is a temple, I think that's very true, but we're also taught in yoga you're not your body and you're not your mind. You have a body and you have a mind. You are a spirit soul. And it's, it's not a religion, right? It is, it is a connection or a spirituality, but I think you know, yoga has been the most integral part of my life that has connected me to how I feel about myself and a true connection with myself rather than what does so-and-so think about me? Do I need to be worried that I'm not a size two or whatever it is? It's not that I don't still have those thoughts. Of course I do. I'm a woman living in the West in the 21st century. But, uh, you know, but getting over an eating disorder, it's a big deal. And I think more and more we're seeing these sorts of issues pop up. Um, you know, people here, we see a lot of obesity, but we're also starting to see this influx of eating disorders and um, body dysmorphia and disassociation. So I think yoga does a lot for all of that, to be honest. Yoga helped you to get over the problem of your eating disorder? 100%. You learn to, through yoga, you know, one of the biggest things that we look at is mind-body connection. Most of us live from our neck up. It's what's in our head, what are we thinking about what that person thinks about us. We all live here. We, our body is constantly sending us signals every minute of every single day. And we have gotten so amazingly good at learning to ignore it and to push it away long before we're sick, long before we burn out, our body is constantly sending us signals. Mm. Yoga is a practice that forces you to listen. And so, you know, yes, it's great for weight loss, it's great for meditation, it's great for all of these things, but it's all so incredibly interconnected. And so yoga is absolutely one of the biggest things that has made me have such an incredibly deep appreciation for for what my body can do and what my body does do and that my body is fighting for me every minute of every day rather than something that has to look a certain way. Well, I needed to talk to you some more, but I am going to come back to you. But sure. let's let's let, let's uh, engage Gigi Ali. Uh, sure. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. And uh, you've been a makeup artist for how long? I have been practicing for about eight years. Mm -hmm. And I started specializing in eyelash extensions, enhancements, and microblading. So micro I, microblading. What is that? So it's a little less invasive than a tattoo, and it does replicate uh, fine hairs so that your brows are filled in, corrected, reshaped, realigned, and you know just have a. You think you can do anything with these ugly brows? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> it could use some work, but yeah. <laughs> She's on. Uh, I try to create a very natural, symmetrical look on mm. my clients. Um, my goal is always to enhance what they already have, 
and just to bring out their features. I had a client, she sort of had a, a lazy eye. And it's funny how you can create eyelash extensions in a way with, that draws away from an imperfection. And it just creates a little more confidence and self-esteem in someone when, you know, you're not focused on, you know, something that's kind of off about, you know, what's going on in their face, especially your eyes, which is the first thing that people, you know, look at when they see you. So I feel like it's just uh, an, an asset that you should pay attention to and well, take the time to, you know, enhance it. Yeah, what do you say to people when they say, these are my brows, man, what you see is what you get, you know? I mean, I mean that's, that's this okay. Is the, this is the way God made me. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, it's not for everyone and it's not um, something that I would, you know, push on anyone that's, you know, not into makeup or beauty. However, I've had many clients who've come to me who were just kind of like, they wanted to just be a model, try it out, do sort of like a sample set and just see how they liked it. And it really changed their view on just, you know, makeup and that beauty regimen because why? Eyelash extensions, they just create a more glamorous glow. You wake up like Beyonce, you wake up like this. So, you know, you just feel like you're ready to go opposed to having to do more in the bathroom, in the mirror. You just wake up and you feel a lot more put together. So I, I really love, you know, the feedback that I've gotten and, you know, just it takes a lot of time when you're getting ready. So this just takes away all that time. And what do you answer when people say, well, you're just conceited, you're self-conceited. What do you say about that? I mean, that you can say for just about anything with perfume, with colognes, with clothes, with, with anything that you just decide to indulge in. You know, it's all about what how it makes you feel. Go back you know? to the conversation that we had earlier yes. in the program. Yes, should I was you, listening. Should, should you be concerned about what people are saying about you? You know, what happens with most people, not just women, men too. Inside your head, you know, there's these voices and they're like, you know, eating you alive at things that, you know, could be beneficial, could not be beneficial. What's truly important is how you feel at the end of the day. It's not the lashes, it's not the makeup, it's not, it's not anything else but how you feel inside. When you can accept yourself, accept where you're at, and you know, just deal with it. You know, learn to accept who you are. If you want to make a change, you make that change. But feeling pressured into anything, you're, you're definitely not going to do it for the right reasons. People will also get criticized for looking good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and people say, oh, you well, know, those are not her lashes. Um, uh, look at how she f um, did her eyebrows. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Do you think I'm wearing eyelash extensions right now? Well, it looks good. I don't know what you're okay. wearing. <laughs> so that's, that's the goal. When someone sees you, they're not going to be like, wow, those are really great extensions. They're going to just say, wow, you have beautiful eyes. So like you said, they look good. So that's my goal. When people see you, they should just you know, feel like they're seeing you, a natural version of, of you, not something different. You know, like you know, whoever's with you shouldn't wake up the next day and be like, oh my God, who is this? <laughs> Everything wore off, who is this? No, you're going to wake up and still look like you. So I try to enhance what, you know, people you already have. You know, Bianca, you, you, you bring such wonderful guests and I can spend a whole afternoon teach, uh, speaking to each of these people here mm -hmm. today because there are so many questions that I have for, for, for each of them. Um, you know, uh, let, let, let me ask you, Gigi, uh -huh. can, can you look too false? Yes, you can get carried away. And you know what I can also say in this industry? especially with eyelash extensions. There's more people in the industry who are terrible than there are people who are actually really good. I pay a lot of attention, a lot of time, a lot of education. Every year I always try to upskill my talent just to create the best end result for my clients. And uh, let's, let's go back to Alexis. You know, we spoke last week about um, these chronic non-communicable diseases. Okay. Uh, people with diabetes or uh, high blood pressure, hypertension. Mm -hmm. And um, how can yoga assist uh, in the case of someone who is hypertensive? Yeah. So, I mean, on the most surface level, I would say that there are so many styles of yoga. I can't, you know, can't even go into it. But um, yoga is exercise. A lot of people think that yoga is like sitting there, stretching. There are forms. I teach something called yin yoga. You're literally stretching in a posture, working on connective tissue for five minutes at a time in each posture. That is. But most of the yoga that we do and um, that is done is much more physically intensive. So it, it does aid in weight loss, I would say, on the most surface level. But what I would say is that you know, what yoga, as you get deeper and deeper into the practice, mindfulness is the key 
benefit of yoga. You start to connect with your body, you start to connect with yourself. I can now, when I eat something, I can tell almost instantly that did not agree with me. And a few years ago, I, I wouldn't have noticed if I had, you know, if I wasn't feeling well, if I got tired, if I got lethargic, but I'm so tuned into what's going on for me and you start to live your life from a place of what's serving me, what's not serving me. Is, is food, ser is certain food serving me? Why am I eating this? You know, along with anorexia, you also have a lot of people who, you know, binge and then purge and all these things. And, and so many of us have just gotten so disassociated from it. But yoga really starts to open up. Once you open up that connection, you start to understand, am I emotionally eating? Why am I emotionally eating? You know, we got into this big conversation about obesity, but overeating, so first of all, like Nicole, I think Nicole pointed to, um, you know, we sometimes, um, why are we overweight? Is it because we actually have a disease that forces us to, you know, a thyroid issue or something? But for most people who are not, is food creating or is it providing some sort of solace for us? Is it somewhere for us to go when we don't want to face the world? First of all, we have to understand why people are overeating. That's what I do a lot of with life coaching. Why are we acting the way that we're acting? We have to understand our behavior and what we truly want. And so to me, yoga is kind of that entry point that forces you to take a hard look at yourself and to really understand why do I, why am I undertaking the actions that I'm doing in anything in my life? And so, um, so yeah, I would say that on the surface level, it's actually going to burn calories and make you stronger and increase endurance, but it is so, so much deeper than that. Mm. And you're able to stop and breathe and um, meditate and learn how to deal with your stress, release your stress. A lot of percent. Even um, people are stressed and they eat yep. because they're so stressed and they're stressed and they don't eat yep. because they're so stressed. So stress has such a, a relationship with us. Huge relationship to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and yoga does so much for that. But, but in that practice of mindfulness that I talked about, so much of emotional eating is stopping in the moment and being like, do I want this food? Do I need this food? Am I eating it because I ate it yesterday? Like, why am I doing this? We start to create that, the capacity for that connection through yoga. Interesting. <laughs> uh, you know, um, back to uh, Gigi. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have people who believe that, well, all women are beautiful. Yes. You agree with that, right? Yes. And, uh, and because you're beautiful, why, why enhance yourself uh, with extra hair? Mm -hmm. uh, why not just allow your, you have a low haircut or uh, you, 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 you aren't able to grow your hair as you would like to grow your hair? So why, why, why extensions? Uh, what do you say to people and such? I think taking the time to groom yourself, to refine yourself in any way, shape, or form for the right reasons, it does bring you a lot of confidence and a lot mm -hmm. of self-esteem. When you look good and everything's pressed and you're clean and your hair is neat, you're combed, you're ready, you're tidy, nothing is wrong with that. You shouldn't feel guilty about refining yourself. It, it's, it's just one of those things. It's your temple. You keep it clean. You keep it admirable. When people see it, they should be like, wow, that looks great. And that's not just your outside, it does also come from within. So you tend to radiate a lot of how you, you know, you groom yourself and how you feel. So tied into what they were saying about, you know, triggers and stress and overeating and things like that. The way you feel inside should also reflect how you look outside. So taking, taking, you know, your appearance in consideration is also, you know, it does go hand in hand with your confidence. And that's why I invited Gigi on the show, actually, because she offers um, some great fixes. So if, you're, if you are dealing with this now and um, you might feel uncomfortable in your appearance, these are some, some things that you can buy and have done quickly to make you feel better. I'm, I've always been a long hair person. I had long hair my whole life. And something happened where my hair had to be cut. And I looked in the mirror and I was like, this is not me. It made me so sad. I actually was so sad about my hair. It was, it, I, I, I couldn't stand it. And when I finally grew it out and was able to do hair extensions, I felt so much better. And it made me feel um, like I could go out there and be more active. And as a result, I started losing weight very fast. 
fast and I start getting into the kind of body that I'd like to have. And so it's nice when you find those. And actually, um, Nygaard Slims really does that for me too. So uh, when I put on Nygaard Slims, it really slims out my legs, elongates my legs, tucks in my stomach, and makes me feel very good. And I buy my own Nygaard Slims and I'm not getting commissions for this, this is how I feel. <laughs> people actually give me compliments on it all the time. So I really love um, when people put that on and no matter what shape and size that they are, then it takes what you have and makes it the best way that it could really look. Um, so I wanted to just throw in to have Gigi in here to offer these kinds of solutions. And she also has a lot of people that um, are don't feel very good about their appearance. And then so she gets to see them come in sad and leave beautiful and happy and, and see how that confidence changes in them. And you both cater to men and women, right? Yes, of course. Uh, you? So in the industry, as I'm based in LA, a lot of actors, male actors, they do eyelash enhancements for their careers. And again, it's extremely subtle. It's You would never know. So for different people in different industries, yes, it, it really does make sense. Okay. You're based in LA. And our pool player, Jane Chalks, is uh, based in L.A. And you are in the lovely Bahamas. Right, right here. Right here <laughs> in the Bahamas. Well, thank you all for being here today. Uh, we uh, enjoyed the program, and I'm sure our viewers and listeners did too, as we uh, continue our series on health issues. Uh, and you've given us food for thought on Image, thank you so very much. Thanks, thank for you. Thank, thank you, Bianca. Thank you. Continue to bring these good guests. I will. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching and listening. Good evening, everyone.